Hey guys, so for today's video, I am so excited because I have the new Maybelline foundation. I know it took, I'm a little bit late on this, but it's because this just came out um, in Canada, first week of December. So I finally have my hands on it and Maybelline sent me a bunch of shades. So I'm typically 220 in their Fit Me collection when I have like a normal kind of normal tan on and then 310 when I have a little bit of a darker tan so those are the two shades I have right now I'm gonna see kind of which one I use today I'm really excited to try this because number one the packaging looks really sleek I love the glass bottle and it has like the white matte top it's really beautiful it also comes with a pump which hello thank you I feel like every single foundation needs to come with a pump like it should be it should be a law, like it has to come with a pump, right? Anyways, um, I'm excited for this because apparently this is like the new hyped talked about product. A lot of people are saying that this is really good. It is called the Superstay Full Coverage Foundation and apparently it's supposed to wear for 24 hours. So we're gonna do a wear test today. We're not gonna wear it for 24 hours, but we're gonna test it out and see if it lasts for your normal you know, eight hour day, let's say. So this says it's a full coverage foundation up to 24 hour wear, seamless matte finish. So it is supposed to be matte, but breathable and comfortable. Fade and transfer resistant, oil free, doesn't clog pores. And of course, when you open up the top, the pump is right here. This does come with one fluid ounce. So it's like your standard size of foundation. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I don't think my mic will pick it up, but it has like a little, you know, a nail polish, how it has the little ball inside. So when you shake it, it shakes it up. This does have like a little shaker ball inside to shake up the foundation, which is nice. So I thought about what primer to use with this foundation. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use one primer on this side, one on this side or whatever, or just, I don't know. I think, I don't know, sometimes I don't really like using different primers. I just want the first time I try it to just be with one primer. So I have these three here. I just don't know which one. So you know what? Maybe let's just go ahead and try out the Baby Skin Pore Eraser. I might throw on a little bit of the angel veil just on my drier areas. I don't know, let's see. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the pore eraser, focus it on my pores. I do really like this primer. So here are the two shades swatched beside each other. We have 220 and 310. So I think I am gonna go in with 310. I just hope it isn't too dark for me. So here is, ooh, one full pump is a big pump. Keep in mind I'm matching my foundation to my body. So I am going to take my beauty blender and I might just use a brush on the other side if I don't like it with the beauty blender, but let's see. I typically really love Maybelline foundations, so I have high hopes for this. So it isn't the easiest to blend with the beauty blender because it does have a little bit, it's not as liquidy as the Fit Me in the Matte and Pore list. It's a little bit more a tiny bit more moussey, you know, it's just a little bit more thicker. It's not as liquidy. So here's how that looks. I feel like that looks really good and that's actually a really nice match. So I am just going to use a brush. So I feel like it blends out better with a brush and easier. Like as you can see, this is just quicker and faster. Um, just because, like I said, it's not as liquidy of a foundation. Beauty blenders work the best with like you know, more movable foundations. Okay, so I did get less coverage with the brush, I will say, and I do have a bit of patchiness up here. Um, so I am going to put a little bit more on the Beauty Blender and work that in. This isn't enough coverage for me too. One pump, I would say, gives you like medium to full where you guys know that I like full coverage. I think I would like this foundation better with a really moisturizing primer underneath like if I use the Huda primer or the um, Milani prime light or just a really moisturizing primer underneath because I don't know you know my drier areas are feeling a little bit too matte so I turned on my lights so that you guys can really just get like a better look because I f feel like the lights was like blurring everything out but I don't know, I just feel like I'm not getting the blend that I want. So I'm actually gonna pop on some setting spray just to like moisturize my face. So now that we got that going, I think I'm going to apply more, but I'm gonna use the brush. Um, yeah, one pump just didn't do it for me, so I'm gonna add another half. I'm not gonna dab, I'm gonna rub because I feel like it, this foundation if you dab, it just takes too long to blend. 
Okay, so now that I applied like some of the setting spray, I feel like it just looks more healthy. Um, on its own with a mattifying primer, it does look too matte for me. It was just too like powdery and matte. And I still think I like it better with the brush and not a beauty blender, which is very rare. But I will say like all of my thicker, moussier foundations look better with a brush. Okay, you guys, I'm actually feeling good now. Like for a little while there, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have crappy foundation today. But I'm feeling a little bit better now after I applied the Too Faced Hangover RX. It just gave me some, some moisturization. So my opinion, if you have, you know, dry skin or combination skin like me, we're gonna need a moisturizing primer with this foundation. But other than that, I really like it. And I know this is like a, a weird first impressions because I'm like having this 50-50 relationship with it. Yeah, I think overall I did have to use quite a bit of it to achieve full coverage, in my opinion, because I do have, um, you know, a little bit of like rosacea on my cheeks and stuff like that. So for me, full coverage, it, it's got to mean full coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my makeup. I'm actually also going to film a chit chat get ready with me right now. So I'm going to go do that and then we'll pop back on camera to give you guys an update. It is 11 a.m. right now, so there's a little timestamp and yeah, I'll be right back to check in with you guys. Okay, so I just finished doing my makeup. So in terms of the foundation, I am noticing already that there is some fading and some patchiness here. I'll actually do a close up for you guys so you guys can really see it. But I, I tend to really have a problem with that area sometimes. It's really weird, but certain weeks it goes away. And then certain weeks I have a really dry forehead in this area and then foundation just looks really patchy in it. But as you can see, it doesn't look like that on this side. So I don't know. I think that's just an issue that I'm having with my skin. But other than that, my face feels really good. I just did set um, with the Too Faced Hangover RX again um, at the end of my makeup. And it feels really good. It feels really lightweight. I honestly think I will really like this foundation once I use a hydrating primer. I just have to give it more of a try. Oh, let's look at my teeth. But I am really excited to see how this, how this foundation is going to wear. So I guess we will check in. This is, oh, it's actually 1240. So it's pretty much one o'clock. It's been two hours so far and I'm not really that oily. Um, I did set my face a little bit with the Fenty powder because that's just what I had in my everyday makeup drawer. But I also really like the NYX HD powder. They're very similar. Okay, so here is a close up of the foundation and how it looks. I think it looks really good. My products went on really smoothly. My nose is looking a little bit oily, but it is because I have a light there. You see how I blocked that? can't really tell but it is because you know the light is shining there anyways um yeah I think it looks really good I'm not really feeling that oily though um just the forehead like I was saying to you guys do you see how this side of my forehead looks okay and then this side has like that patchiness going on I really don't know what that is you guys I like I said my skin has been very combination now so I am kind of dry in certain areas and then oily in the center and I'm just really having a dry area there this week so yeah other than that I feel like the foundation does look really good okay so it is now 7 p.m. so it's been about eight hours and this is how the foundation is looking I feel like it looks pretty good I am looking a little bit oily my foundation has worn off um, around the mouth but that has nothing to do with the foundation it has everything to do with my mistake I was putting vitamin E oil on my lips and obviously vitamin E oil kind of falls down and drags and it removes the makeup so I completely forgot you know, not to do that. I normally use vitamin E oil to moisturize my lips when I'm not wearing makeup, but I forgot about that. But other other than that, um, it actually hasn't faded on the forehead, which normally that's the first place foundation goes for me. We just still have a little bit of patchiness in that area. So if you do have dry skin, it does look a little bit patchy and it does show the dryness a little bit. I wouldn't say that this foundation is for dry skin. We, ha we do have a little bit of wearing off in this area, but nothing really crazy. I still feel like it looks pretty good. So here is a close-up of how the foundation looks. You guys can see the um, the foundation wearing off on the mouth, like what I mentioned. But that is honestly just from my vitamin E oil. I totally forgot that I was like wearing makeup and doing a wear test. I only use vitamin E oil when I don't have makeup on because it obviously does fall and it will remove your makeup because it's an oil. So just, you know, excuse that. Um, you can see the forehead dryness that I was talking about. So it does seem to cling a little bit to dry patches, but nothing crazy. I feel like it doesn't look that bad. Like it could look worse, um, but it actually didn't wear off anywhere. Just, you know, except for that, <laughs> excluding that area. It didn't wear off um on the normal like usual places that my foundation does wear off the only thing i'm noticing is my bronzer wore off a little bit like i don't know if you guys can see it just 
does look kind of like messy and worn off in that area. So all in all, I think that I will really like this foundation with a moisturizing primer and then kind of really setting the T-zone nicely. I feel like I will like this foundation, but this is one of the foundations I am going to have to try more just to really get my thoughts on it. There are some foundations I try and I like love right away and I'm obsessed with right away, but this one, it's like, I like it a lot ish but i just still need to work with it to really see if it's a winner for me so yeah that is pretty much it for the maybelline superstay full coverage foundation first impressions review and weird death long title but yeah that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give me a like thumbs up and don't forget to sign up for notifications just click the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so that you guys can get notified for all my new videos and yeah that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in my next one bye guys Mwah.